So what could data mining do for you? Well, the first thing it can do for you is as, an, as a business analyst, it can help you explore your data and find patterns in the data that you may have not, not have known you had before. It can also find patterns automatically, and you can build that into your application. Or it can perform predictions for you. For example, who is going to buy a product from me if I mail them a catalog? Or what is the uh, value of this real estate going to be in three years? All those are completely reasonable to do it inside of data mining. Uh, basically, the process to do it is, looks a little bit like what you see on the screen right now. The first step, let me kind of go uh, jump ahead here. The first step is to understand what kind of question you want to ask data mining. This is often the hardest thing to do. Uh, this involves typically a business analyst or the business uh, you know, working tightly with you. And after you know the question that you want to ask data mining, you have to understand where the data is going to come from to feed that question. So it's like being back in high school again, where you have to kind of have a hypothesis and, a, and a, some kind of, you know, you have a theory about what's going to trigger what is a good customer and what is a bad customer. You have a theory about what is a good customer and what is a bad customer, and you test that theory with data mining. So you kind of know where to get the data for that, and you, so you kind of prepare that data with SIS. And then after you have all the data kind of flattened into a single table, you're ready to go. The good thing is that table does not have to be a data warehouse. You don't necessarily need a cube to do it. Even though this is inside of analysis services, you don't have to do things like a data warehouse or a cube. All you need is a flat table. So you can do this when you get off the phone with me today. Matter of fact, the example I'm going to show you today is an example out of AdventureWorks that you can do very, very easily after you watch a recording of this. Okay, so make sure Tim is recording this. <laughs> Uh, also, uh, after you've, after you've uh, kind of figured out where the data is at and kind of modeled it and brought it together, your next step is to model the analysis services data mining model. And I'll show you how to do this in a moment here. It's not very bad at all. After we do that, we evaluate the model to make sure it's going to work and to make sure that the answer that we're getting is actually a right answer. Then we deploy it to production and then we tune it and tune it and tune it. We refine it, refine it, refine it. So a few questions that we already have from the audience. Uh, one from Dennis here, can a data mining perform a multi-variable predictions? Yes, it can. Uh, so you can, you can do lots of things like that also. We'll cover that in a bit. Okay, so let me get and jump ahead here from the slides. So these are the algorithms that we can use. The first most common algorithm is the, is the decision tree algorithm. And this is basically an algorithm that says, all right, why, did, why is a customer good to us? You know, why is this customer buying products from me? Well, first of all, he's a 45-year-old man who lives in New York, and he is a smoker or whatever. So you have a whole bunch of variants, and each of those, he's 45, he's male, he's this, he's that. Each of those things are variables that kind of branch that tree left and right, left and right, until you finally get to the answer. So yes, you, uh, that, that's one of the most common one to do, probably the most accurate one to do. And the cool thing is these are very, very old algorithms. You'll find in some cases, like the Naive Veins one, for example, uh, that is, is hundreds of years old. So some of these, these algorithms have been proven for hundreds and hundreds of years. Some, some, some of these are actually in the case of the 1700s and back. The clustering algorithm, that algorithm is, is more for fraud detection. And what its job is going to do is basically to say, how far is this customer outside of the, the normal customers that I have? So for example, let's say we have a credit application. Let me actually turn on Zoom it here so we can see. Uh, I can do a little whiteboard session. OK. Sorry, guys. There we go. So imagine we want to do a loan application. And we have a, a, a graph that looks like this. Along this bottom axis, we have things like our salaries. Along the top axis, we have things like occupation. So we have this farmer in Wisconsin who's making, let's say, you know, $30,000. Another farmer in Wyoming who's making $20,000. And really, this is a 3D chart. This is just, a, uh, it's just showing you a piece of the chart. This is really multidimensional, right? So you can have you know, location, salary, gender, all those kind of things all at one time. We also have this doctor in Florida who's making this amount of money, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All the doctors start to cluster together. So over time, you'll see you'll start to see clusters of data. That being our doctors cluster, and this being our farmer cluster, perhaps. So when we get a new record, and this is this is our proven data that's good customers. But when we get a, get a record coming in for a farmer in you know Washington who's making three hundred thousand dollars, well he's way over here, isn't he? He's a farmer. 
but he's way over here on the right. So we can measure the variance between this, this on the right to, the one, the, to, the, to its cluster and say, whoa, he's way outside the, the population. So he's probably a bad record in this case. So that's what clustering can do for you. It's more for fraud detection. And the cool thing is you can actually integrate that with SSIS, and as rows go through it, you can say, is this a valid record or is it not? Um, or is this a good loan application or not? I use this at one, for one insurance provider to basically automatically approve claims. For small claims, it made sense to auto-approve them unless there was something that was really, really out of whack, and we kick those records to a human versus, uh, to, a, uh, versus to a machine. So that's what clustering can do for you. The time series algorithm is another important one. It's for forecasting a given number. So let's say, for example, you want to forecast your inventory on December 24th based on a whole bunch of conditions. Time series can do that for you. It can also predict your home value in three years, or it can predict a stock price potentially. I've used it for a number of scenarios just like that. Uh, I'm going to skip a few of these and kind of go to the most important ones. Uh, association rules. The association rules is meant for doing like market basket analysis. So if you work for a retailer and you want to find the associations between different products, if a customer buys this product, he probably is interested in buying this product also, that's what association rules can do for you. And neural networks is kind of like your FICO score, and we'll, we'll kind of come back to those in a little bit later. But those are the biggies that you care about. Really, the, the, four, the four that I mentioned are the ones that you really are the ones you want to master. Tim, are we okay on audio? We have a few people, one person saying we lost audio. Are you okay? I will assume we're okay. Tim, are you there? Oh, sounds good. Okay, over here. So we have a few people center saying uh, you can hear me. Thank you. All right, so what I was going to show you real quick is really what, uh, what it looks like from a front-end client. Now, what I'm actually on, I'm on a site called SQLServerDataMining.com. And SQLServerDataMining.com is actually brought to you by the product group, and it has a whole bunch of examples around data mining, and they actually give you all the code for you. So let me first look at a clustering algorithm. What I was going to do is kind of show you, I help you kind of spark your imagination with this. So if I go to a data validation sample, and you notice that the sample is right here and your code is down here, so all the code is provided for you. That's the nice thing about it. Uh, so let's say, for example, we've got a female coming in who is 45 years old, has 20 years education. Um, she's a manager, and she's a craftsman. Oh, sorry, uh, is a relation to head of household with a daughter. Hit submit, oh, and there's suspect, uh, suspect data inside of this. So we can't show details. This is actually the query that's being run right here. It's a DMX query, and we'll come back to this one later. But just note, it's saying that this is highly improbable, about 2% chance that this is actually a valid record. 